Um, I think it's very important that you set clear priorities in whatever role that you have. My experience in government and politics and law business is that if you don't set priorities, then everybody else will set your priorities for you because the urgent will displace the important and you won't spend time on what you think is important. You'll spend time on the crisis of the day, the guy at the door, the emails coming in, the phone calls to be returned and so forth. So early on, we tried to set out very specific priorities that we uh, measure our days against, our priorities against, uh, you know, our, our resources against, and so forth. And they are these in order. Number one, um, we're going to play by the rules. Um, before you can do anything else, um, we want to reestablish ourselves as a place that took pride in following the rules. And so that's not just lip service. We are investing in additional compliance staff. We're, in we're investing in uh, outside auditors to come in and help us do a better job of that. We're making it job one. Uh, with all of our coaches, and I can't guarantee that there won't be a misstep because there probably will be under, under the circumstances uh, that are intercollegiate athletics, but I will guarantee you that it won't be because the institution and the athletic department aren't paying attention, and if and when those things happen, we will, we will uh, handle them in a, in a professional, proactive uh, way that I think can make all the alumni proud of the way uh, we follow the rules at uh, IU. Number two, we want to achieve academically. Um, everybody says that. We're trying to make investments to make sure that happens. We uh, just uh, opened recently a $3 million academic center, which took us from the smallest academic center in the Big Ten to the fourth largest in the Big Ten. It's 26,000 square feet. Our old one was 2,200 uh, square feet. It's a fabulous place. It's a great place for the kids to interact. We've also invested in um, um, academic advisors, so we've gone from uh, tenth in the Big Ten in terms of student athlete to academic advisor ratio to third in the Big Ten, and we think it's paying uh, dividends. Just yesterday, the NCA released their APR academic progress report um, uh, grades, and 13 of our 24 sports. And, and I didn't go to Purdue, but even I know that's more than half. More than half of our teams um, uh, had a perfect APR score, a perfect single season APR score. That includes our men's basketball program. That includes our men's swimming um, program. Four of our programs uh, were ranked as in the top 10% of their sports across the whole country, which is double what we had done uh, before. Basketball is officially off our uh, academic probation uh, with Tom um, success and getting a perfect APR score following on his 975 score last year. We're off our academic improvement plan. Um, with that, so we're very proud of, 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 of the uh, uh, achievements that I think are flowing from the focus that we've put on academic achievement. Third, and it's only third, but third is we want to be excellent athletically. Um, that begins and ends with coaches. Other things are important too, facilities and so forth. But Herman B. Wells said you make a f uh, famous university through your faculty. And the coaches are our faculty, and our athletic department will become famous because we, I, we, 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 we recruit and retain people like Ray Luz uh, and Tom Crean. And, and we're seeing results there. Like, uh, like Don said, I think in our quote-unquote marquee sports, um, we're really getting ready to turn a corner. Football, I'm really excited about our, our new coach and, and his staff. Basketball, uh, Tom's doing things the right way, building the right way. Quick fixes lead to quick falls. Um, he's building a very strong foundation. But there are other sports are doing doing great. Ray just finished his third straight uh, Big Ten Women's Swimming and Diving Championship. He was named Coach of the Year in the Big Ten. <laughs> this spring, our water polo team finished sixth in the country. Our uh, uh, softball team qualified for the NCAAs. Our men's tennis team qualified um, for the NCAAs. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, first in recent history in terms of success with our athletic programs. And we're currently ranked 17th in the Learfield Cup standings, which is a ranking of the overall success of your uh, athletic program. We've never finished higher than 28th in the history of the university. We're 17th now, and just for like a random point of comparison, Purdue's 34th. So <laughs> I feel like we're doing fairly well. Uh, I just wanted to tell you a story about a young man that we had this past year, and it's a, it's a good representation of, you know, um, of what you want a Hoosier to be like. And uh, 
This, this young man's name is Eric Ress, and he was a sophomore this past year, and he's a great student, just got a 4.0. He's a pre-med major, and uh, I'll tell you, if there's somebody to be proud of, it, it's this guy. He uh, was having a great Big Ten meet, set a, set a record, won the 100 backstroke, and uh, on the finish of the 100 backstroke, he, you know, you finish overhead into the wall in that particular stroke, and he hit his hand awkwardly on the wall. And... Uh, and, and it was, you know, you'd think he'd be pretty happy in winning that title, and, you know, he did not look happy. And so we, we you know, we had the trainer look at his hand afterward, and um, they, they couldn't find anything, you know, wrong with it. And she goes, I don't think it's broken, but we'll have a, the doctor. We were at Minnesota, and they had a, a doctor there, and reason enough not to send your child to the Minnesota School of Medicine, because the doctor up there said it wasn't broken either. So in the next morning, it's just a club. And, uh, but Eric spent all, all night long um, trying to figure out a way to swim the next day. We had one more day of the competition left. Uh, and we were in the thick of the Big Ten title hunt. We were, I think, six points down um, the first day, and we were still within 30 points of uh, Michigan. And this is from a team that finished fifth the year before. And nobody could believe we were in the, the race. And, and Eric's our best swimmer, he's our captain, he's the heart and soul of the team. And, uh, you know, when I looked at that hand, I, I was like, I, I brought his parents down and uh, I said, hey, you know, I'm okay with him, with scratching him out of the meat, but I just wanted to involve them in the process. And, you know, he talked his parents, the trainer, myself, into the fact that he could swim. And in backstroke, you have to pull yourself up on the start. He did it with one hand and uh, somehow made it into the finals, like sixth or seventh place. Um, you know, just, it looked horrible. And I, and I just couldn't believe this guy was doing it. And that night he got second in the 200 back by one-tenth of a second. And then, um, you know, if that wasn't enough, the next day we see Dr. Andy Hipskin and it's broken. Broken really good. And we've got four weeks until the national championships for him to be ready. And he goes, well, coach, you know, you guys just need to figure out a way to train me because he couldn't use his arms. So, you know, we put together a training program and he did it and he ended up getting second in both the 100 and the 200 backstrokes at the NCAA National Championships. And without question, he would have won both races had he been healthy and better, better prepared. But that's a, that's a Hoosier in my eyes, somebody that just never gives up, never makes excuses. We're there to leave a mark. We're not there to just pick up the pieces. We've been doing that. And it's been a lot harder than anybody could have ever thought. A lot harder than I would have ever thought. There, there's no preparation for it. There's no plan. Believe me, there is no book until we write one on how to deal with all the things that have gone on inside of that program in the last three years. But I'm here to tell you that it's moving forward because it's a village. It's a village of people that are trying to make this thing better. We hit 1,000 on the APR. For those of you that don't know what APR means, all you need to know is this. When it's not high enough, they take practice time, they take postseason tournaments, they take scholarships from you. No coach, no program wants to lose practice time, scholarships, or postseason tournament. And, and, but, but, but that happens. And we came in and we inherited a very bad one. And we've gotten the thing back up to the point where it was 1,000 for last year, which is high as you can go. We're going to be right near that again this year. We're at a school where the average GPA for the sports teams is right around a 3.0. That does not happen everywhere. It doesn't happen. And Marcus here and Anthony are here, which are part of the football program. It doesn't happen where you have GPAs like that football program has had. Bill Lynch, his staff, those people, they left, they left a foundation there for Kevin and his staff of people to build on and, and, and make it even better. See, that's what greatness is all about. And that's what we're trying to get to right now. We're trying to get players that have a discipline level, that have a commitment level, that, that we're trying to put good people around good people. And that's exactly what's happening there, and that's why we're going to win. That's why we're going to be successful. And I made a comment, and it got picked up by some of the newspapers. If we can start to be as consistent on the court as we are in the classroom, things are going to be pretty good. I had to look at our offseason, and I had to rank where the guys that were on the court and the guys that I've seen what their bodies have looked like, uh, I would have to put Jordan Hulth, I would put Victor Oladipo, 
I'd put Will Sheehy up at the top of the list and I'd have Christian Watford trying to fight to get in that group right now. That, to me, is where it's got to be. Those are four guys that played a lot of minutes for us. Those are four guys that had excellent moments. Those are also four guys that weren't as consistent as they need to be. And they've got to have a consistent work ethic, a consistent level of performance, a consistent winning percentage. We want those guys. We can't keep track of who wins and loses pickup games. We can't keep track of who wins and loses the pickup games when they go home. But I'm telling you, we're preaching day in and day out that they've got to learn how important that is. There's not a day that goes by that when I talk to Christian Watford or text with him and he's back home in Birmingham, Alabama, I don't want to hear what his record was. I can't go see him play right now. But, boy, I want to hear about it, and I want to hear if he's winning, and I want him to take pride in how he's guarding and how he's defending and how he's rebounding the ball, not just how he's shooting it, not just how he's dribbling it. Is he getting to the rim? we got to have those conversations, and then it's up to them to go and make sure that they're doing it. Off-season is where it gets separated. That's when your team really takes shape because that's when players can improve at a very high level. So those four guys have really done an excellent job. They're stronger. They're better. They're better with the basketball. We work those four guys out together uh, very much in our individual workouts. We tried to, to advance those workouts. We tried to advance what we wanted from them, what we did for the end of the season and through their spring break. And what I did even during the, the, the final four period when it's the coaches convention is we dove in. We dove in lock, stock, and barrel to every individual into what they had to do to be better for this team. And they had to know it. And it's not what they think they have to do. It's not necessarily what mom and dad think they have to do. It's not what their old friends and relatives think they have to do. It's what that film says. It's what the numbers say. It's what that film says. And it's what their potential says. And it's our job to bring that out in them. And that's what we try to do in the spring. And that's what we hope is being brought out of them in the summer.